Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you notice over here that we have a thermostat in action. So I want to thank, yeah, I want to thank uh, Elizabeth for being the clarion call warner. And we got that order in there and they replaced it this morning just in time for tomorrow because it's going to be freezing tonight or close to freezing. So anyway, that's an item of business. Anyway, we're going to learn about something today called unit vectors. And so in exercise 21 to 24, find a unit vector in the direction of the given vector. And as we have been doing, I also want to add on, we're going to try to find the direction of the vector too, like we have been doing. Because I think that's been good. It's been keeping you guys anchored to the reference angles and all that and, uh, and standard position angles. So find a unit vector in the direction of a given vector. Anybody have an idea what a unit vector is? Any idea of what a unit vector is? Is it a vector but a little different? That's a, it's a vector but a little different. What do you say? It has direction. What else? Okay. What, what does the word... It has to do with what the word unit is. Let's talk about unit. We've talked about... What have we talked about also this semester about unit? In conjunction with what? A unit... A unit... A unit, where is that thing? What have we talked about? There's a second word associated with unit we've talked about. Right from the beginning, there's a song all about it. What's the song? Unit circle. Unit circle, check it already. Thank you, Riley. Unit circle, right? So we talked about the unit circle. And in a unit circle, what is the radius of the unit circle? No? No, that would be the circumference of the unit circle, right? What is the radius of the unit circle? It has to do with the word unit. Okay, this word here, unit, is a derivative from Latin. It's a derivative from the word una in Latin, which means one. What is the radius of a unit circle? One. And so we talk about a unit vector. We're talking about a vector with a magnitude of one. So what we're going to do, basically a unit vector, we're going to take this vector here, negative two comma four, and we're going to make it so its magnitude is one. We're going to alter this and who said who said a unit? You said it would be like a. Uh, one of you gentlemen said it would be like a vector with altered, right? A vector with direction and altered. Who said that? I was one. Okay, it was Robert. All right. Yeah, and we're going to do that. And this one right here, if we look at it, this negative two four. Okay, here's here's our vector negative two four. Here's negative two, and here's four up here. So the vector is going to be about right here, and it's going to come like it's going to look like this, right? So here's what the vector looks like, and we're going to change this into a unit vector. So we're going to sh are we going to have to shrink that to be a unit vector? Yes. Yes, we are. So when it's a unit vector, it's going to be a little bitty vector, just about down here, like this kind of sort of. Okay, so. Uh, do you have any ideas about how to do that? Um, multiply it by a fraction. Multiply by a fraction. Uh, we're going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and adjust this a little bit because I sort of have the... Yeah, you're going to see here in a minute. Okay, so here's, here's our unit vector. We have negative 2, 4. So what I'm going to do is draw a reference. I'm going to create a reference triangle by just dropping this to the x-axis. And I'm going to just start labeling this, the sides of this triangle. What are going to be the labels on the side of this triangle? What is this side over here? Two. It is going to be two, but I'd say even, I'll even, negative. I'll say negative two. And what side of this is a triangle? It's called an adjacent, right? 
And so, so this is going to be our reference angle right here. What's this side over here going to be? It's going to be your opposite. So your opposite side is going to be equal to 4. And what is this side over here going to be? This will be our hypotenuse. And so what we have is, is basically a unit vector. It's going to be this coordinate pair here, which is going to be cosine theta. Uh, anyway, I said, uh, yeah, cosine theta. I'll say cosine theta, comma, sine theta. That's what the unit vector is. We find what the sine, cosine is and sine is, and we have a unit vector. So let's go ahead and find the sine and cosine of this, this one right here. So what do we have to do to be able to find the sine and cosine? What do we, what do we need to find? The, 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 the hypotenuse, which is the what of the vector? The magnitude of the vector, right? So what is our magnitude going to be? Uh, square root of uh, negative 2 squared. Square root of 20. Right. All right. How did I get square root of 20? I went back here. If you go like this, let's put negative 2 squared plus 4 squared. That's going to be square root of 20. Okay, that's where that comes from. So let's go ahead and put the unit vector in place. So our unit vector is going to be, I'm going to put, what is our cosine? Cosine is what? Adjacent, right? So negative 2 over square root of 20. And you can rationalize this and simplify a little, I mean you can, Simplify that, the square radical. Root of 10. Uh, we have 4 over square root of 20. So that's going to be your, your cosine sine. Does that make sense? Okay, how, are we gonna, how can we test to see if we truly have a unit vector? Okay, do you remember, remember this thing here? We had sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. What does that equal? What, what does that equal? Cosine sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. No? It equals a number. What number does it equal? Zero. It equals one. It's called Pythagorean identity. Okay? Pythagorean identity. So what we can do is we can take this, we can take negative 2 over square root of 20 uh, squared plus 4 over square root of 20 squared and if we end up getting 1 we know that it's the right answer. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So we have uh, Negative two. Let me see. Let me get a parentheses. So I'll put negative two over square root of twenty. That's twenty squared. Plus. Four over square root of twenty. And we're going to square that, and then we have one. Does that look good? That's good. So now we're we're pretty sure this is a good this is a good unit vector, right? Now, what's going to be our direction of this? 
direction is what? And this, I said that's alpha. Direction is going to be this angle right here. This one right here. So direction. How do we get direction out of this thing? Okay. Inverse tangent of... 4 over negative 2, right? So 4 over negative 2, that's going to reduce to be 2, or negative 2, plus, plus 180 degrees. And so that's going to be inverse tangent of, okay, again, Becky's done such a good job reminding me of this that I can just... I'll just do it automatically. All right, so we have inverse tangent of negative 2 plus 180. We should get a number between 90 and 180 degrees. We'll get it right here, right? 116.565 degrees. Okay, what I want you, ladies and gentlemen, to work on is number 22. I'll call on somebody for 22. And then 23 throws another monkey wrench into the deal. So I'll help you out with 23. If you, if you don't uh, see what's going on there. And 22, I already know what the direction of that one is. Mr. G? Yes. Did you ever play any games on your phone? Like, did you ever have some? No, I never did. Oh, why not? Why not? Not, not like casual games. No. Now, back when they had, when personal computers came out, they had games on those that I've, I've played, like they had like everybody heard of Solitaire? Yeah. Yeah, that's, they have that. They still have them. Yeah, they still have it. I have played that. Go ahead. Call it some weight. Yeah, I saw a student today with with like the, the pool game on the on the phone, uh -huh. and he said, "Oh, I, that's just something from my dad." Right. I feel like it would be good at Clash of Clans or Clash Royale. Right Clash of Clans, I know what that is. He, my, my son plays, has played Clash of Clans on his phone, yeah. so I've seen him playing it. I have kind of an aversion to, to games on phones and computers, and I'll, I'll tell you about that after a while, why, why I kind of stay away from that. Distractions? Yeah, and I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what it was later on when we're off camera. Okay, all right. We're going to choose somebody here to help us out with this, and it's going to be it's going to be Becky or Karina. It is Becky. Yes, yes. Becky, it's you, Becky. Problem 22. Let me go ahead and erase this now. This is this erasing is getting ready for sixth period. Okay, Becky. What did you get? Yeah, yeah Becky, what did you get for this one? Don't understand how to do it. Okay, let's draw a picture of this first. 
Okay, that's fair. So we have, I'm going to draw this vector right here. So here's, so here's the one negative one, right? So where is that located? One, negative one. So it's going to be right here. So the vector is going to be right looking like this, right? So this is, so here's your, here's your, uh, your reference angle. Okay, now for this triangle here, what's going to be, what are these sides going to be? You see how I drew a reference angle? I drew straight up to the x-axis. Okay, what are these sides going to be here? One. Thank you, Becky. One and negative one, right? And so which, is this one here, is that adjacent or opposite? That's adjacent, right? This one here is our opposite. Okay, so we have adjacent opposite. What is our hypotenuse? Okay, it's going to be square root of two. Why is that? I'll show you why. Because we get one squared plus negative one squared equals square root of two. Right? So, so our unit vector is going to be cosine comma sine, right? What's our cosine of this reference, of this angle here? One over square root of two. And what's this one? Negative one over square root of two. Okay, so that's gonna be it. That's our, that's our uh, standard unit vector, all right? Or that's our unit vector, excuse me. I'm, I'm kind of working ahead on 23. All right, now, what's our direction of this thing going to be? I'm going to put down what I know it to be. I know my direction is going to be 315 degrees. How did I know that? Um, you um, had your accuracy. Because of the unit circuit. Yeah, because what it is, I know down here the unit circle, Robert's right about that. Because the unit circle, and by the way, the unit circle would be something like, it would be like this, right? Yeah. It would look like this. Well, this is going to be that one on the unit circle right here, which is 7 pi over 4. If you look at your unit circle, 7 pi over 4. And I know that's going to be square root of 2 over 2, comma, negative square root of 2 over 2. But, so you're going to have, it's going to be negative 1 over, how's it, yeah, negative 1 over 1. So it'd be, so theta is going to be inverse tangent of negative 1 over 1, which is negative 1, plus 360, and that's going to be 315 degrees. Okay? All right, see, Becky, that's not so bad, is it? Yes? How do you know you would use the x or y in the inverse tangent equation? Because in the number 21, we used the x coordinate, and then in the 22, we used the y. No, I, I didn't. What happened was, it, what happened is that I, uh, if you recall here, mm -hmm. that what you had is I didn't use the x coordinate or y coordinate. What I did is I did a simplification. So, here we have y over x, right? So it was inverse tangent of y over x, right? And I know that simplifies to negative 2. So that's tangent 1. So I simplified it here. It's not using the x-coordinate. It's using the simplified fraction here. And likewise, for this one here, what you had is negative 1 over 1, which is negative 1. So that's what it always is, just y over x? Y over x. Oh, okay. Y over x. And I just did a mental simplification of that. So that was a really good question. Uh, anyway, I appreciate that.
And so I want to I want to talk about 23 in just just a minute here. And 23, we're presented with something else with this I and J. Does I and J look familiar at all to you? Uh, should it? It might. Depending on what you did in physics, it might look familiar. Does anybody use I and J in physics? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe not that far. Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I and J is. You know, green. You know what I and J is. And actually, there's an extension of that I, J, and K. Actually. But we're just working about I and J. Okay, I'll tell you that I and J, I and J deals with two dimensions. I, J, and K deals with three dimensions. Okay, what these are is that I is defined to be I and J are what we call standard unit vectors. Standard unit vectors. And I'll explain what they are. So I is defined to be the vector 1, comma 0. And can you see that that's a unit vector? It is a horizontal vector with the length of 1. And what do you think j is going to be? j is going to be 0, 1. And so when we have this thing right here, w equals, w is going to be equal to negative. Well, I'm going to put negative i, and i is going to be 1, 0. And then j is going to be, I'll put minus 2, we'll put 0, comma 1. And so we can rewrite this as just distributing here. We have negative, uh, negative 1, 0, minus, and we're going to distribute the 2 inside here, we get 0, comma 2, and just continuing to add these, and we're going to subtract, so we have negative 1 minus 0 is negative 1, and 0 minus 2 is going to be negative 2. So this is going to be our vector, and now, now we can work from here and find a standard unit vector. And what I will do is I'll just leave it. Are you able to take it from here and find your standard unit vector? Okay, remember standard unit vector is, I'm gonna, let me just draw the picture of this here. Okay, we have, okay, negative one. So I'm gonna put this over here. So we got negative one here. And we got negative 2 down here. So here is our negative 2. And that's going to be that. And this is going to be our, our reference angle. And this right here is going to be our standard position angle theta. So we have an adjacent side, an opposite side, and you can find the hypotenuse. And find your standard unit vector. Um. All right, find your unit vector, excuse me. Okay, Riley. Okay, Riley. 
What do you think? I think I'm lost. You think you're lost? Okay. Well, I'll t try to help you be found. Okay, in this in this triangle, in this unit, in this uh, reference triangle down here, what is our try to get this all on camera. What is our do you have an adjacent, an opposite, and a hypotenuse here? Yes. Okay, what are they? So that's your adjacent side here. Okay. And then your opposite is your negative two. Opposite. Okay, what's your hypotenuse? Is it the square root of negative one squared plus negative two squared? Which simplifies to? Square root of, it's going to be square root of 5. Okay, so now do we have everything to put our standard unit, to find our unit vector here? Okay, here's our unit vector. What's going to be cosine equals, okay, we have cosine comma sine. What's our cosine going to be? square of 5. And what's our sign going to be? Negative 2 over square root of 5. Negative 2 over square root of 5. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be it. Okay. And what about direction of this? Um, direction is going to be theta. Inverse tangent. Inverse tangent. Uh, y y over x, so negative 2 over negative 1, mm -hmm. which is that, plus? Plus 180. Plus 180. And that's going to be, we get that in our calculator, what's that going to be? I know it's going to be 200 and something. 200 and... 243.435. So that's our direction. This is our unit vector. Okay. Questions on that? That's not so bad, is it? Yeah. Hand kind of hurts. Your hand hurts. Yeah. Think about what my hand hurts like sometimes. Hey, you've been doing this all day. I think the psychosomatic, you talked about your hand hurting. I think it made my hand hurt. Yes, been doing this writing all day. Okay, ready to erase it? Yes, 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 yes. Let's see where we are here. Okay, yeah. Now we are to number 24. 5A, 5I plus 5J. I will. Everybody knows how to. Do, use the unit vector for that, right? Okay, good. I'll choose somebody here for this one. We have for this one. It's going to be Robert. Your direction ought to be easy on this one, Robert. What, what, Robert, what's your direction going to be for this? You don't know. It's going to be 
to the top right. And what is that direction going to be? Should know what it is right from this. Theta is equal to what? Let me show you what this is. You should. I mean, you should know this. Good. So you got you got this right here. Five over and five up. Okay, right here. It'll be forty-five degrees, right? Yeah, so right here, your theta is going to be equal to 45 degrees. Thank you. Okay? And your, you got your, so, so you got 5 here. You get 5 here. So what's your, what is your unit vector going to be here? Okay, how do we get square root of 50? How do we get... 5 squared plus 5 squared. 5. Okay, so that's, that's going to be it. You got your direction, you got your... Head. Right? That's not that hard, is it? Okay, let's go on to 20, 25. Okay, it says component form and linear combination of, write your answer in that and I'll show you what it means, linear combination. It's very easy. So I'll just go ahead and do this one quickly here. Okay. okay, this one here, it's the same as the others we've been doing. So you have you have this vector here which is which is two one. So here we have two and one over here. So here's our vector, right over here. And here's our, and we drop to the x-axis. So here's our adjacent side is equal to two. Here's our opposite is equal to one. And our hypotenuse is going to be square root of five. Right, two squared, square root of two squared plus one squared. So our unit vector is going to be like this here. We have we have uh, cosine one over square root of five, comma. And actually, it's actually it's going to be two. That's our cosine, right? Comma sine is going to be one over square root of five. So that's a, this is called component form. We've been using this quite a bit. And then it says also as a, as a uh, linear combination of standard unit vectors. So this is going to be the same as 2 over square root of 5i plus 1 over square root of 5 what? J. So there we have our our linear combination of standard unit vectors. Here we have our component form. Okay, so I'll call this a linear combination of standard unit vectors.
and our direction is going to be what? One over two. So theta, so one, two, so I'm going to put inverse tangent of 0.5, so 20, 26.565 degrees. Okay, so that's what they are. So what I want you to do is look at 20, do number 26. You know, call on somebody to help with 26 here in a minute. That probably, that probably will take us right to the end of class time. So you drew it out? So you drew it out like this? Was it like this? So something like this? Okay, here's here's your here's just a diagram. Okay, what is our magnitude gonna be? So square root of thirteen is gonna be our hypotenuse, right? So this is gonna be negative three here. 2 here. So what's going to be our unit vector? Um, negative 3 over the square root of 13 and negative 2 over the square root of 13. Positive 2 over the square root of 13. 2. I'll put 2 over the square root of 13. Okay. And, and then our I plus J. J, okay. And what's going to be our direction? Um, we haven't worked that out yet. Okay. Or it's going to be the inverse tangent of two. It's 180, so it's going to be 100 something. Point three. What did you say? 309 degrees. Okay, we're just going to leave it there, and I'll let you just finish that. And you can just can you turn that and finish this and turn it in tomorrow? Yeah. You can do that because that's two other problems. Thank you for participating.